welcome to NAB Show Live. It's 2015. I'm Callie Lewis. And this I'm is Leslie, Leslie Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> and we are uh, getting started here at NAB Show. Uh, you know, it is early. It's it is early. We're just beginning. This is our second run here. Yeah, exactly. A lot going on, a lot of buzzing, people excited. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you can see that we have the live studio audience here. We are, okay, for people who don't realize kind of where we are, we're not like on the show floor. We're right inside the entrance of NAB show. Yes, so you walk in are. the central hall. It's a nice booth to it. This is awesome. beautiful. It. They have done an amazing job with this booth. And as you can, that's us up there. Oh, no, that's Wait, the other side. Yes. That's I the other side. <laughs> oh, but they can see all of the. So if you're nice here at NAB show, so be sure to, uh, stop to stop by and say hi to us. Yes, indeed. If you're not, that's why we're bringing this to you. So Leslie and I right here and now are going to show you some pretty cool stuff for, uh, for broadcasters of all kinds, and online, new media. And we have some people from all over the world bringing mm -hmm. all kinds of cool technology that they're going to be sharing with us. And we get to share it with you guys. That excites so you, right? We're ex I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> First up, we have Heidi. Hello. Hello, How Heidi. You? How are you doing? Good. From Glad Broadcast Interactive. Yes, Broadcast Interactive Media. We also go by BIM. BIM. I like Keep that. I like BIM. <laughs> BIM. And Heidi what is BIM, BIM all about? Uh, we are all about providing effective workflow solutions to TV stations. Okay. One of the big products we have is our Media Star scheduling tool. The idea behind it is all web-based. As long as you have internet access, login, and password, you can actually build, manage, report, and update all your scheduling from one system. And then it so so describe the kind of problems that you know TV stations encounter. The, obviously, one station has a bazillion different shows that happen in a 24-hour period. Yes. Yeah, so some stations are still using Excel sheet to manage their <gasps> scheduling tool. No way. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so they're still using it. So the idea this is going to allow them to uh, that schedule and do it five years in the future, one year in the past, and they can do recurring events, do it once, and it's set. Okay. Um, and the idea behind this, too, is so if they have several Fox stations, for example, okay. uh -huh. instead of making that on the 12 Fox affiliates they have, they make it once, and then we can distribute to all their stations. Uh -huh. So the idea is trying to limit double entry of data. Uh, we also work with an, a data partner that allows an overnight data process to put in the episodic information into the schedule. Mm -hmm. So it's one less thing they have to do. So I think, again, if they're doing this in Excel sheet, how many times do you have to copy and paste and manually enter in information in there? Um, we also provide then program descriptions in there. And the key about this is our system is then connected into PSUP. Uh, PSUP is the metadata that goes over the digital signal that when somebody at home has a converter box or smart TV and they click on the guide, yeah. that's the information that shows up. Oh. Um, so that's it's required awesome. by the FCC, so okay. we'll provide that. So when they build that schedule and they hit publish or save, it goes out to that. But we go one step further. We also have a consumer site called titantv.com, and then we provide affiliate guides so the TV stations can actually put these guides on their websites that are just for their station. So they make these changes in the scheduling tool, send it out, it's automatically updated. Okay. So this information is always up to date per their entries into the system. Okay, so since we don't have the, the software up here because that's at your booth, so if you're if you're able to go check that out, do that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you and you guys our spreadsheet for for dealing with our run. This is our run of show. Okay, it's pretty much exactly like uh, an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> yes. Just like I was just so showing her real quick, but then we've got. This is, this is the go. way we go, right? So we've got an Excel spreadsheet, so we've got the, the names and the you know, companies and all of that. This is somewhat similar exactly. of the problem yep. that you're describing. Because we actually <laughs> have stations that have a live streaming channel, and they use our scheduling tool to build that. And then when it shows up on the guide, it actually has a link right to the live streaming. Okay. So we could actually take your live stream schedule, put it into there, all the metadata you want on it. You could have links then to additional um, web pages that you want to be able to show, or maybe for example, ours, you'd have it to link to our website that would show up in the guide. So we have the problem that you're talking yes. about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we put all that information in here, we'd schedule it, um, we'd, able to, we'd be able to see what you're coming in with, what you're presenting, and mm -hmm. the, this would be also able to be published on the website. Yep. And it's all so real time? People that are, all real time. The people that are watching live would be able to see what's going on. Also. Yep, and they'd be able to click on a link and actually go right to the live stream. Now, That's can you brilliant. show different sets of information to the people that are on the live stream versus the people that are on here? As far as 
Like if, if there's certain details that you wouldn't want them to see, but you only want the host to see? Yeah. So yes, that's okay. the, we have a, one of the big features about it is our reporting. It's actually able okay. to customize any reports that you want, and it's color coded, and you can add logos and everything into it. We like color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is you can have it so information just shows up in the guide, but then you can run re detailed reports for whatever you need. Okay. And they can be you know very customized, so it's just maybe one information, one show, or it's the next month of information or the mm -hmm. next week. You really customize how you want that report to show up. And what are you able to see in those reports? What kinds of details? Uh, program description, um, EI codes, are they, you know, education informational shows, okay. uh, and there's also custom fields. So a lot of stations have different things they want to be able to report, so they can yes. actually do different customers. Is it local? Is it syndication? Is it network? Is it the first run, second run? Is it HD, SD? You know, you really get into a lot of the information. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you do audio and closed captioning, if you want to be able to include that information, you'll be able to include that. Um, it's all in there. Okay. So how do you... Uh, obviously, this is you have kind of a history in broadcast television, yep. but you're you're merging with the online world as well. Uh, how do you see that changing in the near future? Uh, updating that kind of. Um, the biggest thing is that it's at the fingertip of the user. Mm. I mean, they determine the data yeah. that goes in there, especially if you have a, a, a schedule that you create on your own, like a live streaming. You determine what goes in there and sure. what information you want to show up on there. And then if you need to make a change real quick, you can do it very easily. Awesome. So and it's really putting it all back into the power of yep. the user. And set an Excel sheet that maybe it's on a, a drive somewhere yes. that you can't access when you're from <laughs> home and you need to quick make a change. This is all on the web. You log in, you can make those changes, hit publish, it's automatically updated in real time. I'm just glad this that you're awesome. not sitting here yelling at yeah, us. Yeah, she, like, be, she should <laughs> actually like, you're be doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And the key thing with our system, too, is we're in development of working with the traffic systems. So oh. one of the, the other things is that all this episodic information stations enter in the scheduling, they also then have to enter in the traffic system. So the idea is we're trying to eliminate double entry of data. That's really our key yeah. thing Got here. It. So then it be sent into the traffic system as well. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, yes, Heidi. Where, for where can people find out we're more? We're in North Hall, Hall uh, 7639. And online, where can they uh, find you? Broadcast-interactive.com. And okay. BIM on Twitter, right? And BIM on Twitter. BIM on <laughs> yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah, keep it short and I sweet. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us here at NAB Show Live, Live. 2015. And thank you for joining us. Yes. This is great. <laughs> all right, you stay tuned for more here from NAB Show all week long. We've got a, another like hour and a half today, and then packed full days the rest of the week. Oh yeah, and I'm excited about that. I mean, we have some great people coming up and I know that the technologies that we're gonna be showing, you guys are gonna love, so yes. stay tuned. <laughs> Geeky.tv slash NAB show. Bye. <laughs> like All the right. voice of God Woo. in my ear. Oh, you do hear him now, awesome. All right, who's next? Hey, um, guys in the control room, Curly. When you're talking to Kien or back, th whoever, when you're talking to Kien or anybody back there, I'm still hearing you. Yeah, so can you mute it or something? If you can maybe like pull away from the mic. Okay. Okay. Hello, sir. Hey. How are you? Doing well. How are you doing? Craig. Craig? Yeah. Leslie. Craig, Hummel. Nice to meet you, Leslie. Ooh. Nice to meet you, too. Doing well. You sound a little bit I'm disordered. Callie.
in the chat room at geekbeat.tv slash NAB show. NAB show. Oh, we weren't on. Yeah, I know. I was still talking. <laughs> and I was muted, so. You, you don't know what we were talking about. Wait, I think You I'm guys muted. don't want to know either with super secret stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at NAB show. <laughs> Uh, yes. Edward to the far and Craig close. <laughs> is this the last one? Just give us doing? a second. They're no. just fixing some stuff on the back end. This is the last one we're doing. Yes. That is good. That's what we do. So we will go. <laughs> I find a flow and I and I and, and I and, and I move with it. <laughs> 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 I was trying to make up some kind of. It didn't really work out for me. Yeah. <laughs> You were with it. You were vibing, right? <laughs> sometimes yeah, awesome. it goes. Sometimes it completely crashes and burns. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on camera so much, you, you eventually come up with something that really does not work. <laughs> somebody somewhere out there, it, it resonates with somebody. Else. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. Uh, you'd like to hope yeah. so. <laughs> well, you know you like him. Just look at his shirt. Yeah, I mean. There you go. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he he did so more more so than you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tried my best. <laughs> you try your best. That's all yeah. right. We accept that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should take some water. All Can right. Can we need a mic check on you Craig. guys? Say your name. Craig. Okay. And Edward. Edward. Awesome. Check. Perfect. Check two. You have approval from the control room, from the from the voice Is of Mike God. Is Mike a little distorted? Craig. Craig. <laughs> Never mind. We're good. <laughs> Mike. Your name is not Mike Matthews? <laughs> Craig Michaels Matthew. Craig, Math Craig Matthews Michael. <laughs> and we're going to go with we'll Craig. Craig. All right, we'll go with okay, that. Okay, we'll today. just go with Craig. <laughs> we'll shorten your name. Okay. I'm digging that I'm music. Yeah. Awesome. Music <laughs> I don't know. Keep the music going, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Leslie Samuel here. And I'm Callie Lewis. Welcome to NAB Show Live 2015. So much going on. Oh. We're so excited. We're, we're looking at some really cool gear today. Yes, already. Oh, and yeah. It's only like it day one. Oh. It's like pre show day zero. <laughs> 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 and to kick it off even further, we have Craig and Edward with yes, us indeed. from WebTuner. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How's NAB show treating you so far? Like I said, it's day, day zero, so you haven't really yeah. gotten going, but are you all set with your booth? I think so far so good. Uh, the, the mad scientist here is the one that sort of is handling all of that. Almost. So. Oh. <laughs> Almost ready. <And laughs> you just have four more hours. Is this your first time <laughs> at NAB show? No. 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 Awesome. How many years have you been going? Uh, I took a little hiatus for, for about five years, but uh, maybe it's probably my sixth. Okay. Total, so. Awesome. And you, Edward? 12 years. 12, 12 years. years. Wow. Oh, you're a veteran. veteran. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. And did you have the title Mad Scientist before? Uh, before no, this, this, is, this is a new one. This is a new one. Expect a raise. It's evolving. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Sounds good. You, you guys, guys have, have some goodies. interesting toys here, and I'm excited already just looking at them. Yes. This is the web tuner. This is a very high power, uh, compact, portable uh, set top okay. for over the top services. Um, Wait, so, so, so describe how we're going to use it. We are, this is a web tuner, essentially, just for grabbing broadcast TV? This is a web tuner. Uh, essentially, we can pull in all sources of content, live, online, and on-demand okay. content. Uh, we have a, a unified guide that pulls all those sources together, makes it easy, and, and effectively, the, the, it's the same guide for all of those different sources, so you're not having to bounce around between viewers and and different applications. Okay. Kay. Can I see this a minute, please? Yes. Okay, so I plug this into the wall. Yep. And then what do I do? Plug that into the wall, plug that into your television. Okay. Fire it up, 
connect to the your, uh, there's an internet, uh, ethernet connection, an HDMI connection. Okay. Okay. Uh, obviously, HDMI out to your television. Uh huh. And you can run uh, direct ethernet or Wi Fi connection for, for streaming services. Okay. We have a, uh, as and you for see any the, streaming services, so well, Netflix, uh, music, music, video, games, okay. um, effectively any of, any of those services, yes. Okay. And, and then, go ahead, Leslie. And what, like, so what, what exactly am I signing up for to get that coming through this? So there's, there's two ways you go about it. One okay. is just essentially uh, your over-the-top services, your Netflix, Pandora, Hulu, et cetera. Those are just um, available through the uh, the Amazon or excuse me the uh, the Google Store, um, you can you can pull those onto your device onto your device. You just go about uh, browsing them and accessing that content just like you normally would. Uh, for the aggregators, uh, cable operators and such, uh, they obviously will pull in live streams and sort of integrate all of that into one experience for you. And so we've got the remote here. I see mm -hmm. on the back it has a keyboard. Yes. I oh wow. Oh yes. Yes. Welcome I that's to the, easy searching. That is the kind of uh, wow. outside of just pure voice search. Mm -hmm. I, I freaking love keyboards on remotes. It, it really simplifies the whole interactive uh, yes. experience. Um, I can it's effectively it's, as soon as I start typing brings up a, a, a fast find menu, and whether you're searching for a program, actor, you know, celebrity, okay. uh, particular movie, et cetera, um, makes that whole experience yeah. much, much easier. Nice. Now, a question from the chat room. Monty asks, uh, is it running Android? Yes. It mm. is. Yeah, it's running Android. Android Lollipop. Lollipop, OK. okay. Yeah. So it's latest one, the greatest one. Okay. Nice. Yeah, and just as a customer, it's very easy. Going to store, you buy a device, 6495. You come home, you connect, you can add your password to your services, and you can watch TV. Now, what about uh, accessing the content through this, like leaving it at home and going away and accessing it on the go? Can As we you do can that? see, it's very portable. You will put it in your pocket, you go another place, you connect. Hotel room. It's like phone, right? It's just portable <laughs> set the box, right? Nice. Yeah. You just carry it in your pocket. And this is portable set the box. Nice. This is what we're showing here at NAB. Okay. But it's a little bit more. Oh, it's it just but wait, there's more? There's yes. more. <laughs> Tell us more. Who am I? A scientist? Mad, Mad scientist. scientist. Okay, <laughs> Mad, Mad scientist, scientist of set top boxes. Yeah, so actually, this is... It looks like a cigar oh. case you've got yeah, over there. This is kind of jewelry box, and there is different guide of devices. This is kind of... This is actually a magic compact computer. So this is a very powerful computer. And here at NAB, we are showing only one use case of this computer. Okay. It's a set top box. But actually, you can use this device for different purposes. Oh. So for example, you can do home security and home automation oh. on the same device. So uh, for example, also, for example, you can bring this device in the school, and you can actually pull all your actually textbooks on this device, and you can go to the school mm -hmm. with the device and that instead of this heavy backpack and go back home. And teachers, they can check this device and check your homework. So this is kind of portable school. Another thing, actually, let's say you want to watch broadcast TV. This is an IP. There is a lot of broadcasters. Yes. Digital <laughs> terrestrial. So you want to watch digital terrestrial. So there is another Lego block here. This device with a small oh. input. Ah. You will take antenna. You oh, will, so plug you will the connect antenna this antenna there. straight into this device. And there you go. You can watch broadcast channel nice. Nice. together with the Netflix and Hulu. This is kind of legal area. <laughs> right. <laughs> you will carry antenna with you. No, you won't rent it. So, so you're trying to stay away from the lawsuits? Is that what course, you're telling me? Of course. <laughs> so I'm seeing this here. We have the antenna here, and then we have an Ethernet. Sure. Correct. And this device will turn to digital terrestrial channel, uh -huh. decode it, demodulate, and will stream to your OTT box. And this device will render in-house. Oh. So this is like Lego blows. This is in order to have Lego hybrid set of box, you have one device for OTT and other for terrestrial. So, so I'm going to buy that one first. For going to the TV. And then I just get an additional one. Same price, $65? Yeah, it's one, this one is cheaper. We uh, don't have price yet. It will be probably much cheaper. And then that other green one that you pulled out, is that different? And other green one, this is different. Actually, this How is... How many different ones do we have? Yeah, this is very fascinating. This is actually <laughs> a hybrid set of box, include oh. both. Can you guys see this? OTT service and digital terrestrial. Okay. In one, yeah. 
in, in basically in one. one system. And these these all play together as well. So if you have, for so the, example, bedroom or other other areas in the home, these devices all uh, communicate and, and and effectively you can stream content through uh, throughout the house. So you're gonna you're gonna be able to stream the same content throughout the house, not yep. necessarily different content, correct? Sure. Like that's the same content. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so the more of these little boxes I, I get, the more I'm expanding the functionality of my Correct. system. We encourage everybody oh. to have lots of them. Of course <laughs> I'm you I'm sure will. you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is awesome. So, okay, so $65 for the for the base unit yeah. and then and the prices have to be determined. And ultra model for $190, and which is, is very do? powerful. This is 64 gigabyte memory. Oh. This is with the Wi-Fi AC latest and greatest with a one gigabit Ethernet, so you can stream 4K movies. So this is super box. Nice. One nineteen dollars. And with that, I just plug it, it into the wall. I connect yep. it via HDMI to the TV, and it's good and to go. And you can watch 4K movies, yep. and you can store up to 40 hours of movies on your device, and you can put it in your pocket, go away, and watch it offline. It's yep. the super box. Oh, question, does it come with a cape? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I'm Good. not joking, actually. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> so actually, usually, there is joke in, among software communities. You can write your program. This program will do everything, but this program can't cook coffee. Right? Right. Correct? So actually, this device can cook coffee. Wait, are you joking or serious? No, I'm serious. <laughs> I can watch TV and have my coffee at the same time? Yeah, so this <laughs> actually, this device can talk to the Internet of Things devices. Nice. So if your coffee uh, maker machines and new coffee maker machines, they are coming with the Bluetooth connection. So this device can control your coffee maker. And while you're watching, you set up your recipe, how to cook your coffee. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I am going to profess my love for you right here and now. <laughs> like, Ooh, the wow, this is awesome. I'm sticking some of these <laughs> in my pockets right now. And uh, this is I want awesome. The, I want the, the cigar box full of it. There you go. Wow. So where, where can people find out yes, more orders? Yes, tell us. Uh, so please come visit us, uh, Sprocket Hub. Uh, oh, we are in booth uh, N2530F. Obviously, online at webtuner.tv. Awesome. Uh, you can email us at info at webtuner.tv as well. And so lots awesome. more like more announcements on the pricing and all of that coming soon. So yes. stay tuned to yes. the website for that. And which one is available right now? Are they all available? They are all available. Yep. All available. Awesome. They are all available right now. And I, th I need two more minutes for developers. I think maybe there here is in the room a couple developers like me. Uh -huh. So actually, we will open this platform for anybody, so if you can come up with any idea how to use this piece of hardware, and you can write your own application, and you can sell your own product, actually like Nest or something like that, using this device. Yeah. We, we have development version of the box, nice. and we will also sell for developers with the all open sources running on this device. So you will be able, actually, to develop your product without spending half million of dollars in production, put on this device, package it in your package, and sell it as your own consumer product. Oh, wow. Wow. That's awesome. nice. OK, fantastic. So developers, consumers, everybody, it, you guys have something for everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank I you. know you're still Thank getting you. set up for NAB show, and I wish you the very best this, this week. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, Leslie and I are actually Getting, that's it getting, for now, right? That's it. That's it. So we're actually going to bring Alex Lindsay and Dave Curley back up on stage to take it over and see some more really cool stuff. So stay tuned. Geekbeat.tv slash NAB show all week all long. All week long. Some exciting stuff coming on. So stay tuned. Leslie Samuel, becomeablogger.com. I'm Callie Lewis. Bye, guys.
Why don't they just make one across the board? Everything. It's just crazy. Hey guys. Hi guys. Let's see. Uh, yeah, camera one. See it hanging down there. You can barely see it hanging down. Right, right there. Right. All right. Right there. See? Yeah. There we are. Hey guys. It, while we're waiting, if you have any questions, uh, comments, uh, I got the chat room right here. Oh, good. So, uh, so um, throw them out yes. there at us. I'm Dave Curley. This is Alex Lindsay, the lovely and talented Alex Lindsay. Why? Thank from you. From the Pixel Core. Having fun. Yes, a whole glad bunch to of be here. Digitized people. Is that what y'all do over there at Pixel Core? We we sometimes digitize them, sometimes we undigitize them. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So it's like know, a bunch of people walking around with ping pong balls? Yes, yes. All over? Yes, That's we, what we, we're we really at. prefer ping pong balls. Yeah, and I've worked with you guys before we did the Google event, and everybody's walking yeah. around in black suits and ping pong balls. Yeah, it's, you know. It was really like weird. I felt uh, odd being dressed. That way you have little 3D characters on a little map, and yes. you can not only tell where they are, yes. but, but we can actually um, watch them move around. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. It's very useful. Fantastic. 
Well, so we're here at uh, NAB Show Live, and um, I'm liking what I see so far. Have, yeah. Have you? I now. It's a nice little cafe. I was afraid we were going to end up with like theater seating or something like that, but yeah. So if you're if you're coming in, it's uh, it's a very comfortable place to come hang now, out. Now, are we in IMAX? Is that how we're going out to uh, the world? Uh, 4K. 4K. Uh, 4K. 4K um, in in uh, yes. stereo. Yes. In 3D. See, yes. we're in 3D. 4D. 4D. Can you? I'm glad you showered. Oh, yes. That's, well, yeah. that's good. Yes. Thought that's that that good. would be appropriate. Please say some offensive things. Oh, yeah, we're not going to say offensive things. It's, it's, not, it's not that kind of show. It is, it is Vegas, but it's not that kind of show. We are doing audio, our friends from Audio Technica first. Okay. So we have Gary, right? Yep. Gary, Dave Curley. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hey, Alex <laughs> Lindsay. Gary? Good to meet you. Can you get everybody to look at me real quick? Oh, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, Audio Technica. Love these guys. Awesome. Oh. Like the toys. Very good. Like the toys. And these are the. This is the uh, AT twenty twenty and the BP forty. Yeah, correct. Okay, great. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, so um, I don't know if they told you. We're just going to have a conversation. Great. Uh, the cameras are all hanging from the trussing back there. Don't worry about them. Yes, have, talk with us. Talk with us, please. And um, yeah, we're just gonna have a conversation okay. and tell us. to be here with yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Good to be here. You've been one of my heroes for years oh, and uh, uh, I've enjoyed everything that you've been doing and it's, it's really the penultimate thing in my career to be sitting here <laughs> next to you, well, touching you, smelling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's all right. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Um, Tell me, Alex, what are you uh, what are you seeing around here? I mean, we're just this is this is kind of like day minus one of. Uh, well, everybody's rushing around. Everybody's very stressed right mm -hmm. now. So um, we, you know, I've been walking through some of the halls to get get a couple places because we've got some Coolio passes and looking for freebies. Well, of, of course. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but but as you know, you're just you know, this is the stressful day where everyone's trying to get ready for you yeah. know getting fully set up. So things are looking a little cleaner, but there's still a lot of big right. And we're stressing them out more because we're bringing them up here, taking yeah, them yeah, away from their like, booths. Yeah, exactly. Trying to so. bother. And yep. uh, somebody we've yanked from our, our booth is uh, is Gary from Audio Technica. Me? Thank you for joining us. No problem. Pleasure. What are you guys uh, doing here this year? What do you, what do y'all uh, y'all are regulars well, at, at, yeah, at we're, NAB? Yeah, we're a transducer company, so we make microphones pretty much for all aspects of everything that you would use microphones mm -hmm. for. And at this show, we're obviously showcasing our shotgun microphones, and we're actually introducing two brand new microphones at the show this year. Awesome. Uh, the first one, can I show you? Please, hey. please. I hope you brought uh, some for the whole class. Is this yeah. guy. And this is the AT2020 USB-I. Now, the AT2020 is a microphone that we've had for a while, and it's, yes. a, it's a digital microphone. Yes, we, it has we, a we've used one. We'd USB like output. If you look at the bottom of this, you're going to notice it doesn't have a USB output. It has a micro HDMI output. And why would we do something like that? Well, what that That's allows us to camera. do now 
is we have two cables that come with this. Okay. So now we have a USB cable, so the micro HDMI to USB, right. and then we also have one for lightning connector. So nice. now this is compatible with the iOS devices as well. So Mac, PC, and iOS, and we took it and made it high res, so now it's uh, 24-bit 96K, so it's high-resolution really? audio. So we took one of the industry-standard digital microphones and we kind of updated it. Large diaphragm? Uh, it's a medium, medium. diaphragm, yes. but it does have a baffle ringer on there. It's very baffling. <laughs> and, and, your, and, your, uh, and, and what are we attenuating here with this? Uh, That's the actual the mic gain. It's gain, the mic at, gain the right? yeah, gain yeah, at the microphone. Gain at the microphone, okay. Yep. And, there, and then this will go directly, so if someone wanted to put this directly into their iPhone or, or yep. iPad, they could um, record to a variety of it's, anything. Excels at like podcasting and work sure. like that. You can go uh, right into your phone for, say, video interviews or right into your uh, iPad for, say, podcasting work or radio work. Now, when you're actually listening to it as it's going through there, um, what kind of latency are you getting? You know? On the iOS devices, you will find virtually no latency. Mm -hmm. If you do multi tracking in like a PC environment, mm -hmm. I right. do have another microphone called the USB Plus, which right. actually has a headphone output on the microphone itself. And so you have zero same. latency. Sure. That Same one does thing. not, and the reason for that is the bus power coming from the iOS devices is not powerful enough to actually power a headphone amplifier in the microphone sure. itself. So this will excel more at those applications that you would do for a radio or something where you're not doing multi-track, where the latency is not right. an issue. And, right. and this would be exceptionally good, I imagine, for conference calls. You it is. It's if, great if, for If you're that. competitive. If you're really yeah. competitive. You know, <laughs> I, you know, like, like I always want to be <laughs> the best glorified. sounding person. No, I know. We'll use one of these VR know. 900s for your conference calls. I know. Exactly. Exactly. So the, for the video calls, we have the big cameras, and, and, and so if you really wanted to sound good for a conference call, this oh, would, literally. This would. And the nice thing about that is it's kind of a uh, Swiss Army knife trademark or whatever mm -hmm. I have to do on air, um, and uh, so you can use that for a Skype call. But then you can right. take it and you can do your podcast, and mm -hmm. then you can take it and you can do voiceover in a video right. and for your wedding video or sure. whatever you have. It, it works for all those applications, and I can also sit there and record an acoustic guitar and vocal on it. Right. right. So it's just a real handy microphone. I can definitely see for journalists who are, I was just at a big big event and saw all these journalists sitting there trying to record to their laptop oh, yeah. off mm -hmm. somewhere else, but this is something you could really just, uh, I mean, what kind of off-axis rejection does something like this have? Is it pretty sensitive? Or yeah, that's a, that's a cardioid pattern, so obviously it picks up the best from front. Mm -hmm. It picks up the least from 180 degrees off right. the axis, uh, yep. right in the back of the ca uh, capsule itself. So mm -hmm. it's perfect for environments that do have some noise, like maybe you want to do some voiceover work in a hotel room, sure. say. Right. It's really going to focus on your voice and get rid of a lot of that ambient right. air handling. The, you can put the, uh, the comforter over you and get under there with your laptop and go Pe to town. People will do it in the uh, closet. Sure and they'll put the comforter up and go record in the closet. Absolutely. We actually, we actually did some voiceovers. There's little tricks of, the, <laughs> tricks of the trade. Everyone's, <laughs> yeah. like, everyone's like, what is he talking just, about? Just you before know? we came out here, we did some voiceovers for a Dish Network, and yeah. it was you know, a, a little recorder in the closet. I yeah. worked like a champ. I've done a lot of uh, <laughs> But that's not one of them. Under yeah. the, no, I've done a lot of that. <laughs> okay. I've, I've done a lot of voiceovers for, for commercials and so on. So where you're in a rush, someone gets you, know, they need something, and mm -hmm. uh, you throw it in there. Now, uh, what's the optimum, optimum distance to this mic? Uh, well, uh, that's a, one of those sticky questions that microphone manufacturers are often asked, like, sure. how far away can I work this microphone? And it's 100% mm -hmm. dependent upon the ambience in the room. Right. So in a very quiet environment, you know, a standard arm's length is, works very well, but if you're in an environment where you want to get some of that proximity effect and get right. some of that low end up, you can get right on that microphone. It gives you a little bit more so testosterone. Be sure, be sure you have a pop filter <laughs> and a... Correct. Yeah. Correct. It is. It does have internal pop filtering, but when you get that close on a microphone, you want to put you that. You can always there. overpower that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And you said the, the the USB Plus is the same. It's pretty much the same mic. It's a lower res. So lower it's, res. Okay. It, and it also, but it does have the headphone output. And again, this is our latest generation. So literally, this is the first time it has been under lights in right. view of the public. I know. That's right. Well, it's, uh, I, can I can hear the internet, it's all a buzz now. I can tell the phone are lighting up, people are calling their when, friends. When is it, when is it shipping? Uh, that's going to be shipping approximately June, July. Okay, June, July. July. June, July. I, nice. I, I didn't know that was a month, but that, yeah. that's, yes. that, that's good. Yeah, and and uh, what's, what's the price? Uh, $199 will be street price on that. Great. Great. Yep. Great. So now, very now you've price. got something else over there I want. Well, this is, is the right? imposing microphone. Okay. Are you, can you handle it? Oh, are you kidding? All right, I'm going to bring Come that on. on. Hanging on here. So this is our first time into this market. So this is the BP40. This so looks like a uh, kick drum. 
Well, the, you know, it's funny. The only reason that looks like a kick drum microphone is because people took microphones that are for that purpose, right. which is vocal, and, and used them in the kick drum. The kick drum yeah. This is actually a broadcast vocal microphone. So, so this it, is looks, an, it looks a little like an RE20. It, it, it does, does look yes. similar, but this yeah. is a wave-inspired industrial design. It's supposed yep. to look kind of like a digital wave form from the side. I, uh -huh. yeah. You know, we'll just play along, please. No, it is. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay. In fact, I'm getting seasick looking at it. Right. Right. No. And uh, so this is actually our first foray into a purpose-driven on-air broadcast microphone. I like that. That is nice. nice. It's built like a tank. Uh, we do have an optional shock mount. And um, I'm going to take the hood off of this guy. And three people in your audience are going to be very excited by this. And yeah. everyone else is going to be, like, what huh? is he doing? Uh, well, we're going to be <laughs> yeah, yeah. two of them. We're both mic guys. This so is, uh, this is a proprietary that. capsule. It's a very large diaphragm, about 38 millimeters, and it's a humbucking design, so it's resistant to EMI. Mm -hmm. The other thing that our engineers in Japan did on this microphone, which is very unique, is um, we have what we call this floating edge construction. So the way the diaphragm is tensioned across there, this is woo. I'm glad there's geek in the name of this program, because oh, yeah. I yeah. would be going way off the deep end. Oh, but, no. Uh, it maximizes the surface area, and it minimizes the distortion actually at the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say that this sounds very much like a hybrid between a dynamic, so you get that low, mm -hmm. big dynamic sound, and the high frequency response of a condenser microphone. Okay, so good. it's very articulate. Good. So but you it still maintains, get the fat bottom. Yep, it right. maintains the big end with the with a nice articulate detail. Wow. This is great. great. And and proximity wise, I mean this is like an RE20. I mean we're gonna we're gonna get into it. The thing that's nice about this microphone is the actual capsule placement. I'm gonna put this up if anyone can see that. Okay. The way the capsule is placed within the head case, once you kind of dial this microphone in, it's much less distant sensitive than other microphones. Okay. So if I do have to move off the microphone, it still maintains the presence. Okay. You know, it doesn't really change the audio fidelity because the way we've optimized the capsule placement within the housing. That's great. And is this in the market yet? It is not. That's another June Lai, June Lai product. I, I just coined that term. We got another um, month. I know. And uh, yeah, we're, we're very, very excited about that. We've actually sent that out to a couple key individu individuals for review, and they have been exceptionally satisfied wow. with the microphone. So. Wow. Well, I would, I would love to be able to get my hands on it for review. I know Alex would as well. I'm certain yes. this you, is, uh, you can do that. This is, this is great. <laughs> I actually have a lot of things. I'm getting ready to do a lot of voice recording, and uh, this will be fun to play with. Yeah, what's, it's, it's what, a cool mic. What's the estimated street price? Uh, about 350 bucks. OK. Yeah. And the shock mount's about another 100 bucks or right. so. Um, but yeah, that's uh, all proprietary, purpose-built microphone from people who have been doing it for 50 years. So well, that's yeah, great. Yeah, Audio Technica has a, has a fantastic uh, brand, fantastic reputation. It's one of my go-tos. Oh, um, in, uh, come on now. No, yeah, I, love, I love your shotgun mics. <laughs> Sweet. Your, your shotgun mics are fantastic for field work. They're fantastic mm -hmm. for um, using as a, as a boom mic in studio. Yeah. Um, we've had lots of success. Lots awesome. of success yep. with them. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that. Yes. Didn't thank come you. here for the praise, but I'll take <laughs> it. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us, Gary. Yes. Oh, no problem. Thank yeah. you, guys. We really appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Take care. Right. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks. And, and thank, thank you, you, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, please, no. no. Thank means. you for watching uh, NAB Show Live. Uh, we'll be right back. Thank you all.
Hey everybody, welcome to NAB Show Live. I am Dave Curley and I am here with my buddy, Alex Lindsay. Hello, Alex. It's good to be here. It is good to be here. I'm enjoying this. This, uh, we're, we're uh, kind of in the, the, the big buildup before the show actually officially launches and I'm, yeah. I have not had a chance to uh, get out on the floor and see anything yet. That's why you're I'm, not supposed to. No, I know. I know. You're not they, supposed to. I, I know. I tried. I've been, I've been doing it the whole time. The last yeah, two days. Yeah, he I've been has. Around. He's, he's I've been, been going out, taking things, taking things, moving yes. things, move, turning other Hi, lights I'm Alex. On. Can yeah, I have one? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah that's, exactly. Yeah. That's a, we actually have an intern that goes around and does that. Yeah, Pablo. Yeah. He goes in and immediately starts uh, asking for free. He comes back with more stuff <laughs> than than any of us. I mean, it's you amazing. You have to know how to ask. No, I know. And he, he's also really good looking. Too. Oh, well, so, there you go. There you go. Yeah, and he's from Chile, so you know, it's this whole thing. Anyway, we are sitting here with. Actually, uh, a company that I have uh, been working with uh, off and on with uh, Martin here from uh, vMix. And um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So for those of you who don't know, uh, vMix is, uh, is, is live switching software. Yeah, that's right. So we started out making uh, the software many years ago, uh, fully functional live production software, and have gradually been adding hardware turnkey systems for people who want those as well. So we sort of have two different customers, customers that like tinkering and mm -hmm. building their own um, systems, and then we have those that just want something that works that's ready well, to and, go. And that's where I came across vMix uh, a couple of years ago. Before and we're, I mean, if you've seen our booth back here, we're using a TriCaster. We've yeah. got, you know, hundred thousand dollars worth of broadcasting streaming equipment in there, um, and I was looking to do some streaming at home, and, you know, on no budget, and I was looking for some switching software, and I came across vMix, and one of the things I liked was that I was able to get started with uh, a trial and be functional and do all my testing and figure out what I wanted to do and then actually, you know, pay for the software and get into it and, and actually have some success with it. And thank y'all yeah, for, for doing that. That's, that's that that is great. You can you can start on the low end and build your own rig and, and and that's what's, I guess, one of the main advantages of, say, a, a switcher is if you don't have the switcher there, you've got it in your studio and you just want to play around with some settings, say, play some videos and see how they might work in your live production, mm -hmm. you can just install it on your laptop and you mm -hmm. can even create presets and then load them on this when you're back at the studio. So um, it's, it's sort of what vMix came from was my own requirements where mm -hmm. I was doing a couple of shows many years ago and I just... Um, Back then, you didn't have a complete integrated solution, um, playback, cameras, and everything in a single piece of software, and I didn't have the budget, you know, right. I wanted to do something on the cheap, and my background is programming, so I thought, um, <laughs> give it a go, very, very, very daunting task, particularly on PCs back then around 2005, oh, yeah. uh, was when I started um, working on it. So, um, yeah, it's really just built for what I want to do as quickly as possible. Yeah, I find that, that some of the most successful products out there, you've had tremendous success with the products that you guys at Pixel Core have mm -hmm. made because you've come up, you've had, you have a need, yeah, I, and I you come up with something. The best products are when you're scratching your own itch. Yeah. You know, you know, you know yeah. like you have, you have, there's something that you're trying to figure out how to get done in it because you're the best customer, you know, well, you, you are a good customer typically, you know, it, yeah. rather than trying to, I think a lot of people try to develop something for an idea, like people will be interested in this, but they're not trying to solve a real problem, yeah. you know, and, and I think that definitely makes a difference. Now, your um, your software now handles 4K 4K input. Yeah, so 4K we announced last year at, at NAB mm. um, 2014, um, and so we're still there. 4K ready is what we're saying now because we're still waiting for other camera manufacturers sure. and um, everybody else to start using 4K more often. And right. when and they're now, ready, so is that mostly an import an input? Issue, yeah, or? so you can, well, yeah, bringing the cameras in in 4K is, is still a bit of a challenge. Yep. These days, you, you, at the moment, I think the best way to do it is via HDMI. Right, right. Um, because you still have to use multi cable SDI yeah. um, for. And when you say H, okay, so, so HDMI is just the single cable, so you're yeah. looking for an HD, you either take what you already have, convert it to HDMI, or cameras yeah. that are doing 4K that can output HDMI. Mm -hmm. out. Well, yeah, so, yeah, or can output. 
Quad SDI, I think, right. is the is the, the current standard. I'm right. hoping, you know, by next year's NAB, there'll be a single cable solution that's standardized that every camera manufacturer has. That's just has. crazy talk. And then vMix will be right there ready to have them all plugged in and do 4K. And I guess the other um, aspect as well is waiting for people's internet connections to catch up oh, so gosh, that yes. there is a, a large audience out there that's ready to receive 4K. I think it's right. slowly happening. You know, Netflix has trialed mm -hmm. 4K with mm -hmm. some of their shows. Right. As that becomes more and more popular, Popular, people were like, hey, I want to stream in 4K, and VMix will be right there. And, that, and that average it. speed is, is starting to catch up. And, yeah. and, and, and I think it, it also depends on whether it's H.264 or HEVC. You know, like yeah. those, are, those are things that are... are um, if 65 gets ratified, yeah, then... Yeah, I mean, you know, that... And, and uh, the, uh, now, are you, your system is also encoding. Yeah. So, so it's really an all-in-one box. So you're going to take, you're going to get the video signals in, you've got playback, you've got all those bits and pieces, and it's going to actually stream. You're just going to point it at Ustream yeah. or YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Your provider is, right? And then record as well, right? Yeah, so simultaneously recording, um, streaming. You can also send it out via SDI if you mm -hmm. have a supported hardware or use one of our systems. And you can also send it to a separate display, up to two separate displays. Mm -hmm. So you could have your multi-view, you could have a preview on that display, and then your control. Um, on the middle display, so yeah, I guess five or six different simultaneous output are, options. Are we able to do multiple recordings? So, like, say, ISO recordings from each channel? Yeah, so that's and then in a, there. A clean version and then a program? Yeah, version? so the, the way we have it is we have what we call multi quarter, which is our version of ISO recorder. Okay. So, that gives you your raw cameras right. if you want to do your own um, post production editing. Sure. And then you have the master mix that you can record to a number of different formats. Um, so yeah, you can have all of that going as well. And we also have, as new in, in, in NAB 2015, we're announcing the new vMix Replay, mm -hmm. which is for sports productions, able to record four cameras simultaneously mm -hmm. and then do slow motion playback, switching camera angles. Good. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different output options going on there. And, um, and we just keep expanding based on customer feedback. I guess that's the main thing that really drives me is, is hearing customers come to our booth with very interesting and mm. unique problems. And, and that's the challenge that I really I thrive on is seeing, well, can we do that? How do we do that? And that was part of the challenge with 4K. You know, 4K just started last year, really, I guess. Right. 2014, they thought it was a year as 4K at NAB. And it just before that, I was thinking, can we do 4K on a PC? Is it possible? And fortunately, it was. Hardware was up to it. And, and already assuming that 1080i, 1080p, yeah. um, 1080p 60? Yeah, 1080p 60. Yep. Um, and can you mix SDI. and match those inputs? Yeah, so that's a unique advantage of, I guess, vMix over some of the other switches out there. You have to make sure they're all locked to a particular format. Right. Um, but yeah, mix and match 1080p, 1080i, 720, SD, just you know whatever you've got, which is great for people in the budget. They have a couple of SD cameras. Maybe they've um, only be able to afford one HD camera sure. and they want to mm -hmm. use them all. Perhaps. That's, that was my setup. I had a little Vixia, the 1080i Vixia, yeah. um, as like the primary camera. But then I've got this Canon GL2 that I've had for mm -hmm. 10, 12 years. It's still a solid, yeah. you know, performer. So I wanted to get that in the mix, and that's what I liked was being able to do that. And you can also mix in your VTR channels, your DDR channels. You can you can do yeah. multiple formats as well: MJPEG, MOVs, AVIs. You know, what other what, whatever you want to play through as well. Yeah, and so with vMix, you're not limited to DDR channels. Right. Every source is treated like a camera or a DDR or a graphic. Including, am I right, um, you can actually, you've got an engine for doing a screen grab? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, so built-in capture there, so if you have a, a Apple or Windows laptop, right. bring that in over Wi-Fi or over the network. Right, good. Um, are, you, are you able to receive uh, RTMP streams or HL, HLS streams? Like so, so for instance, like a Teradek or, or something like that? Being able yeah, to... so what we work with the Teradek Cube mm -hmm. um, yep. with its RTSP support. RTSP. So we built that support primarily for the Cube um, a few years ago now. So mm -hmm. that's a great way to bring wireless cameras in in full HD. Right. Um, and then you also have the... And those could theoretically be remote cameras as well. So if you had like, yeah. for instance, a remote, like a Bond or, or something like that, you could theoretically be bringing it in from... Yeah, so Somewhere we support else. access to the Teradex Sputnik as well. Right. So that's where you send the bond signal to, and then you bring output. that into the production mm -hmm. that way. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you could be, you could have remote for the, those listening. You mm -hmm. could have you know four remote people out or, around in the city, and they could have they could be actually sending those signals back. You know, over they could either have an internet connection or they could be using a bond where they had just cell 
cell towers and all that stuff could be coming in and being cut. Right. Yeah. Right. Without yeah. a lot of extra hardware, that's just all being seen by the computer. And usually those are kind of virtual, you know, yeah. layers. Yeah. Just like inputs, just like um, cameras and everything else. And so you can mix and match them. You can create what we call multi-view effects. So you could mm -hmm. have side by side. So you have the presenter and out there in the field. Quad views. And are those are those uh, are you able to transform in 3D for those? Yeah, yeah. So you can have them in in a, a 30 degree angle. angle and and, um, and then here's the hard question: Is are you oversampling the edges at all on those on those? Um, no, but you can <laughs> you can design graphics to oversample on that uh, and over create that. templates. But yeah. So as far as the 3D effects go, yeah, it's not f uh, fully 3D sampled. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. The uh, no no one does that by the way. <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're asking, I was just throwing them. That, that was that was a ball. Like, like if, he, if he hits Alex that, Alex is you know. submitting his wish list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so, but the, um, uh, uh, anyway, that's, that, that sounds great. It's a, it sounds like a great platform. Now, what's the, what's the cost, basic costs? Well, we start out with a free version, mm -hmm. um, a 60-day trial, which is fully functional, install it on your laptop, become familiar with how the whole workflow works, and then you have a basic version, which is SD only, mm -hmm. which is free for life, just to get people started. Um, and then we work all the way up to um, vMix Pro, which you've just released this year, which is, uh, uh, introductory price of twelve hundred dollars. Now that's mm -hmm. a full instant replay system, mm -hmm. right. equivalent to a twenty thirty thousand dollar replay system right. for twelve hundred dollars. If you don't need the replay, then you can go and get the vMix four K version, which has everything else for seven hundred. And, and uh, that's, that's and that's all the software, and then you're going to build up whatever hardware you want. Yeah, so you can build your own hardware, or you can go with um, the systems we have um, at our booth this year. We have the vMix Go, which is a great portable unit, eight right. cameras built-in screen, it fits in a case you can carry on an airplane. Um, so that's $10,000 for eight inputs. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a solution that you can plug into your laptop that is right. a Thunderbolt solution with four cameras um, for, I believe, $3,000. So um, if, if people out there are looking for a solution where they don't have to build their own PC, they just don't, don't want to have to worry about that or don't want to customize it, they can just come to our booth and check out those, those solutions um, that are ready to go. But if they are a tinkerer or a hobbyist, like, that's what I am. I right. like playing around with different components and the software is great as well. And we're, gonna, Fantastic. we're almost done, but I'm going to ask one more question. Control surfaces, how do you handle yeah. that? Yeah. So we've released a control surface this year that works both with, this, with the software and with our systems. Mm -hmm. um, it's a traditional switcher setup, so mm -hmm. if anybody's used any other control surface before, they'll feel right at home. So that's going to be released probably towards the end of April, early May. Do we have an idea of pricing? Around $2,000. Okay, that's great. Um, so it, USB? It's, yeah, USB. USB or Lightning, mm -hmm. or I mean, not Lightning, uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah, USB. Plug okay. it into, if you're using a laptop, computer, or a system, okay. just plug it right in and it works straight away. So hopefully end of April, early May, we'll start shipping. Now here's, I, I'm a Mac user, heavy Mac user. Any idea about going over and doing a Mac version? Well, we've just found that they've just performance tuned Windows so heavily for 3D games and games always run better on Windows, it's not necessarily because Windows is better at games, it's just all the game manufacturers it's have install base. Optimized, right. optimized heavily for it, and we take advantage of that game architecture okay. for vMix. You got, and you guys use uh, GPU acceleration? Yeah. Good. So because of that, vMix just runs better on Windows, just the way the market is. As games become more popular on the Mac, we'll definitely look at that once the performance cool. is on the same level. Great. Great. Well, That's thank great. you for joining us. Yeah, we appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, you be sure that uh, if you have any questions or anything, to be sure to tweet them at NAB Show or use hashtag NAB Show. And um, I'm Dave Curley, and this is Alex Lindsay. Thanks for watching.
Hey everybody, welcome to NAB Show Live. I'm Dave Curley. I'm Alex Lindsay. The Intrepid, Alex Lindsay. Intrepid? Yeah, you're Intrepid. Isn't there a ship called the Intrepid? Oh, it's yeah. Not, yeah, exactly. Excelsior. Yes, exactly. We are here at the NAB Show in Las Vegas, Nevada, and this is kind of um, paradise. Yeah, this for is for us. It's kind of the highlight of the year. You know, I've yeah, been, I think I've been I think I've been coming now for 20 years. We're talking 20, about 20 20 years. See, actually, this year, 20 years. Okay, so uh, in '91, when I started college uh -huh. and started learning how to edit and do everything, we um, our our professor said, "Hey, do y'all anybody want to go to NAB?" You right. know, and it was like you know, $2,000 or something like that for, to do it. And so college budget, I said no. But ever since then, I've never gone. This is my first oh, really? time. Yeah, industry uh, professional. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've been, we've been doing stuff, streaming and, you know. I, I started out as a demo artist. Nice. So I was, I, 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 my job was here. It was, used to be over in the Sands. You know, ah, long, yes. long Sands Expo, time yeah. ago. Dating yourself. Yeah, I know, yes. exactly. So yes. the little, the little multimedia one, you know, like I don't even know what part of it is, that, but parts of the Central Hall, whatever, were over there. And it was just these little, and I, there was a company called Electric Image that was a 3D animation. I remember animation. Electric Image, yeah. So I was a demo artist for Electric Image, and that was my, that's how I learned how to do, uh, went to NAB and, and then I started, then I was press and then speaker and all that. Yeah, and stuff. your mother and I are very proud of you now. You've really, well, thank you. you've really thank come you. a long way. So anyway, so it's, it's great to be back. We're yes. having a good time. And we've got a great, um, this is a, Sam Bogosh from Axel Thanks. Video. Great and to be here. Thanks for joining good, us. Good yeah. to see you. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, are we, what are we doing here? What is Axel? What are we doing Yeah, here? I see Axel. I mean, NAB, NAB of course. Yeah. But, uh, so basically, this is our third year at NAB. So we're a pretty quickly growing little startup. Uh, based in Boston, mm -hmm. and our mission in the world is to make it really radically simple for people to manage all the videos that they're shooting. Yeah, uh, and we're shooting tons of yeah, videos. Yeah, we, we got to talk actually because yeah. I, you know, I'm just looking at the operation you have here, it's like, hey, these guys could probably use our stuff. And, and the, the kinds of people who use our stuff are shooting a huge amount of video, but they, they need a database because otherwise they just get piles and piles of sure. hard drives and Drobos mm -hmm. and NASs, and they can't find anything after a while. So what we do is we basically point that, uh, our software at that kind of storage volume, catalog what's on it, and then mm -hmm. present it through a browser. And you can do sort of Google style searching through the browser, yeah. you can preview things, you can scrub, you can do mark ins and outs and say, hey, let's use this in the final edit. Can we, so can uh, just, can we generate uh, basic EDL lists or shot lists or anything? Exactly. For yep. We generate a shot list and then that goes out to the editor. So, Great. you know, work with Final Cut, Premiere, mm -hmm. and now we also have Axel Gear Pro, okay. which handles Media Composer formats as okay. well. And, so we and when you say Final Cut, you're talking about Final Cut 10? 7 and 10. 7, seven, and ten. Uh, seven okay. is, yeah. is still mm -hmm. widely used. still around, hanging yeah. in there, but obviously all the news. What's wrong with you guys? It's what the, 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 the grown-ups use. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's sort of like, I mean, Editors are real dyed-in-the-wool people. Like once they start yeah, using yeah, something, yeah, 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 um, yeah. there are still people out there using things like Avid Meridian, right, right, which right. I mean, what was that probably back when you yeah. were doing those electric image yeah, demos? Exactly. People are still using that because it's like it works for them and it was tried and true. So same with Final Cut 7. It's not quite as old as that now. Yeah. But there's a significant market share. People mm -hmm. still using that. Mm -hmm. And so and, and they're not getting a so when you're when you're composing this, so some, and someone can go onto the browser and start to put together an edit. Yeah. Um, and, and this is really an assembly. I mean that's really what they're it's, what they're it's a combination of search, archiving, and assembly. So mm -hmm. the, the idea is first of all you gotta bring the media in. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing it helter-skelter, we just recommend that you use a shared file system, which yep. you guys are probably doing. You know, you have sure. like network storage, you put everything in folders, and you mm -hmm. organize it as best you can. The big gap that this happens... This includes adding all the uh, metadata and stuff. Well, that's yeah. where it's tricky, because there, there's no clear way to do that that's right. searchable later. Right. You would actually have to go and open all those files to find that metadata. Well, see, currently I'm using um, uh, Adobe um, Bridge, Bridge, yeah, right. and, and generating them, and that's how I'm searching for my stock. And that's good for a single user. That. For right. a single user, Bridge is, is a perfectly good exactly. choice. Where it breaks down is, I got three or four people, and we got to search a shared volume, right. and we've all got to know what each other's doing, and I want to send this guy a note saying, hey, I found your footage right here, here's the pointer to it, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And Bridge kind of breaks down, and there are some other traditional tools that I also kind of break down for the groups. And we estimate that there's about 100,000 groups worldwide. It could be as little as two or three people or as many as 30 or 40 people. Sure. But, but those teams that are working with video now are everywhere. They're in universities, they're on the web, 
They're, you know, of course, in traditional broadcast and post environments, but they're also in corporate America, mm -hmm. in, in religious organizations. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of churches as customers, and also sports teams. So we have teams like the New York Yankees mm -hmm. and the LA Dodgers that use our software. Um, so it, it's, well, it's and, kind and, of everywhere. And there are, there are multiple sites as well. Is, they can be. I mean, yeah. it depends. Sometimes it's just a little team off doing their thing, and then we find out later that another little team in the same company right. took well, it on. And, and, and basically what's happening is you're pointing your software towards it. Right. And then it's going to go through there. It's going to catalog everything. It's going to build low resolution proxies. Uh, proxies. H.264 proxies, right? is exactly. So those are tiny little proxies that yep. we can, you get in, how big, how big are the proxies? They're one megabit per second. Perfect. Okay. Yep. And so, um, so now you have, I have all those proxies. People can view them. Now I can have an assistant go in and start adding data to it. You got so, it. So all of that stuff is now being added into that web, that web client so yep. that anybody anywhere on an iPad or whatever can see all that. Exactly. Can search for it. Um, yep. And you then, got it. And then, and then I'm able to then build assemblies if I need to. And pass it to an editor right. for finishing work. And that editor is going to get an EDL. Exactly. And, and now, does your software also help them retrieve all that? All that? Well, what's cool is we, we make the assumption that the editor is actually connected to the same storage right. mm -hmm. that, that the other person was uh, connected to. If they're not, we allow you to download the media to where you are. So if you're at a remote location right. and somebody else finds the three or four clips, that you're really going to need, they can point you to those. The other thing we can do is- Now, these are the proxies that they'd be able to download? No, that's the cool part. Okay, you can so get, they download can your full. choice of the proxy okay. or the high res Great. We also have an integrated version called Axel Gear, where we include some transcoding software from episode, mm -hmm. and we can actually subclip those out. Because nobody likes to transcode two hours of HD footage. Right. Right. But suppose it's only 30 seconds that you care about. Sure. You can clip that out, download that a lot quicker. Good. So right. there's a lot of nice workflows that people you know, are able to do with the software. And what, what do we have on here? So this is our latest product. We're announcing it here at the show, and it's called Axle Edit. Okay. What happened is a lot of our customers do use Axle with their iPads and their iPhones, mm -hmm. and they came to us and kind of said, wouldn't it be nice if I could do a little more of the editing process on my mobile device? So instead of like just searching and handing it off, if I could actually go in and do some, some basic rough cuts. So what you can do in Axel Edit is actually you have a timeline view of the media. You can drag that media from Axel down into that timeline. You can then trim it. You can do audio controls. So for instance, if I click on this, I can, I can adjust the volume of the audio. Mm -hmm. uh, I, can, I can do a, you know, audio fades in and out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Can you normalize or any of the, the, the basic audio editing? Simple, simple stuff. Okay. This is a 1.0 brand new product. Sure. We're just announcing it here at the show. And basically it'll work with any of our, of our media management products. Okay. The, the iPad app is free from the App Store mm -hmm. and you, you basically then just download that and combine that with the server side. What's cool about that is that you can actually do a lot of your edits on proxies. Because as you can imagine, rendering HD on an iPad from sure. an edit is, is a bit of a stretch. Sure. So we let you work in proxy on the iPad, mm -hmm. then you hit send, and it renders it on the server side in HD. Mm. And from there you can go to the web or to air or what have you. So, and, and so when you hit send on that, so when you're editing this and you're, yep. and you're putting those together, yep. uh, when you render that, it really is rendering the final, ver possibly the final version. Exactly. Right. And, so. and yeah, it's, it's a dynamite product. We just came back from a conference in Dublin called MojoCon. Mm -hmm. It was a mobile journalism conference. Mm. Right. And it was like hundreds of really top tier TV and print journalists, they were all going there to just figure out you know, how to do what you guys do, basically. Yeah. They're all using Meerkat, they're all mm -hmm. using Periscope, they're capturing, they're trying stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have a company called The Padcaster that's going to be in our booth, yeah. and they do, you know, you know yeah, those we, guys, we, right? Yeah, we do, we've yeah, actually yeah. worked with them a bit. So they'll be in our booth at the show, S and can I give the booth number? Is that Please. SL16015, we're at the back of the South Lower Hall. So the Padcaster guys are going to be demoing their stuff with Axel Edit, and then tying it all in with, with the workflow in our booth. So Fantastic. it's going to be pretty exciting. And, there, and, and when you're shooting locally, though, it still needs to go to the server first, right? So they're going to. Correct. So someone shooting with, a, with an iPad or an iPhone would shoot it and then send it to the server. That's get right. Get it onto the server, get the proxy back, and then combine it with, the, with other footage that they might well, have. Well, what's neat is actually you can kind of trickle that up to the server so you, you don't need from to. From your laptop? Fr or, no, from the iPad oh, itself. Okay. So whether it's 4G or Ethernet right. or, 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 sure. uh, or Wi Fi, you're, you're basically just pushing in the background uh, your high res is up to the server, then the rendering happens, and then you come out with your high res finished. Material. So okay, so if I'm out in the field uh, doing a job for Pixel Core, and um, I've shot some interviews or something, if I'm in my hotel room, can I, you know, through my VPN connect yep. to my back end? Yep. Through your software, 
can I just start ingesting it into my back end that exactly. way, or do I need to? No, no, that's go. exactly it. You okay. do it through the VPN. And, and your software is just going to look at the photo library. Right, and, and, and you can select which ones you want to send. Right, I mean, it'll also do it based on the sequence, so once you create your little sequence locally, mm -hmm. it'll know which clips to, to bother sending up. But you can, what's cool here is, of course, you can combine those with B-roll and other footage that you might have on the server. Sure. So you're like, oh, I like this, I like that, I like that, and I just shot this stuff. And we actually have a video, if you go to our website, axelvideo.com, mm -hmm. A-X-L-E-V-I-D-E-O.com, mm -hmm. we have a new video that shows this. We, we actually did it at a, at a hockey game. Uh, you know, just the reporter goes to the hockey game, shoots footage, combines it with B-roll, and then puts it together into a, into a package that goes to air. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. so and I just want to make sure that I've got it all clear. Sure. So, I'm, so I've got, uh, so I can grab the foot, this uh, editing software will grab the footage that's on my iPad, yep. and I can edit it there, yep. and then send it, and it's only going to send, now I can send, can I set head and tail that it's going to send out? It's not. The first version of it isn't smart enough to know what part to upload. So it uploads all the clips that the you whole use. The whole clip. Okay. But, yep, it, yep, it, but it doesn't fine. upload the clips you didn't use. Yeah, that's great. In the future, we might get smarter about it and, and selectively, kind of like we do you with know, the downloads right now. Right. It would be really cool, of course, if it was smart enough to only upload what you need also, but it's not, you know, it's not there yet. You know, I'll tell you, I would, I would actually prefer that it don't because I've, been, I've adopted and I'm teaching your mantra that footage doesn't exist until it's in at least two places ideally three or four. That's true. Right. So, Especially when it's an iPad, it's like, oops, I left my iPad at the, at the exactly. food counter. Yep. Well, there goes your footage. You know. Exactly. This, this kind of gives you a, a, a second channel, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Is there any limitation? Does it doesn't? It'll use whatever it has. So if you're on LTE or that's right, you know, whatever start, bandwidth, whatever it's got. whatever it's, whatever it can get a hold of. So the other thing to be careful of, of course, is if you're on a capped. You yeah, know, on a, you know, you just, use you just, it up just, pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true, and we don't we don't look out for that. Um, but that's where Wi-Fi comes in, obviously. Absolutely, and, and people, absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're really psyched about the product, and it's a companion to our existing MAM products. You know, the the MAM story itself is is actually a pretty key one, though, because. We, we feel like 95% of the footage that people are shooting out there today is not managed. They right. have no way to search sure. it. And uh, you know, I, I've been doing digital asset management and media management now for, for quite a while. I was, before this, I was at Avid uh, doing the Interplay products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, we would handle the, the biggest, you know, most demanding requirements, Avid still does, at the high end of the market. Right. But it just occurred to me and my colleagues that there was this great opportunity for tens of thousands of people sure. who needed the same thing, but at a smaller scale. Well, I know this is something that, that uh, we uh, at Geeks Life could, could use. This is, I, I drill into my team the, the staying organized, yep. following, following my file structure, my naming yep. conventions and all this or kind else. of stuff. Yeah, or else, because, yeah, yeah. because you know, if, uh, if, if Carter's doing something and then he leaves for the day and I need to finish it, I need to be able to jump in and pick up and, exactly right. and know even on his hard drive for his local storage, I need to see the same thing so I can go exactly right. the same place and I, can, I would I, on mine. I can also see this as for big events, you know, conferences and so yep. on and so forth, having everybody shooting and ingesting and getting everything in there, yep. and, then, and then somebody else just pulling that, pulling, and this is a desktop application as well? As uh, so the, it's a browser app. Basically we do browser okay. and we, then we do the native iOS. So I could okay. actually be doing this on my Chromebook. Uh, you could, you yeah. could. I mean, I'm not the not the actual edit part, but the the browsing but and the searching, absolutely, yeah. And and to your point about events, we have a customer in Europe that does this at like all the big music festivals. Mm -hmm. They right. go out and they shoot the music festival. Uh, they actually use uh, uh, the Telestream Wirecast products to, to mm -hmm. live stream right. it, but then they capture it all in storage mm -hmm. and they use Axel to catalog it. That's great. And they're getting like massive, like millions of YouTube views, yeah. you know, and corporate sponsors and all this stuff. That's great. They've really set up their own broadcaster, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. it's like. Five guys in a van, basically. Right. It's, it's amazing what you can do with, with fairly lightweight, affordable technology. Okay, so uh, your your software, the or the new um, Axel Edit. Yes, Axel yep. Edit. This is out now. It's available now. We're shipping in May, okay. so you know, a few weeks. But yeah. Okay. And uh, basically, to give you an idea of the pricing. Uh, our, our media management solutions start at $995 okay. and go up from there, and Axel Edit starts at $795 for two users. Okay. So you, you could configure a complete system. They run on a Mac Mini, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also put it on Mac Pro. So you can configure a complete system for about $5,000, mm -hmm. including the hardware. And of course, we have, we have customers, big broadcasters, that have spent you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on bigger systems, but but you can get. This is the first time, really, that media management has been approachable like this, where like a normal person or two mm -hmm. could just get it up and running. 
without like assisted men and an right. you know, installation team and all this stuff. Fantastic. 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 Sam, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank really you so appreciate much for it. joining us. Thank you. And, Thanks uh, a lot. Enjoy the show. Thank you. And uh, lots of luck to you guys. Great. Thanks. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, we're actually going to uh, we're going to cut here for just a sec. John P's going to join us, and uh, we're going to do a little roundtabling mm -hmm. and geeking out, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Uh, I'm Dave Curley. I'm Alex Lindsay. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be right back. I'm I'm not used to using Fresnels and uh, yeah we're we're all LED I know it and uh, in fact uh, we had some guys come by earlier who were asking about all our setup and stuff we'll have to do a boot tour for everybody by the way hey guys if you can hear us and stuff hi you know uh, we're hanging out so um, we had some guys come by asking us about what kind of equ equipment we were using everywhere that's that's going to be the most popular question I think of the show and uh, I, I love I love back here. Back here, we've got behind our booth. Um, we've got a glass wall, um, so everybody can see us and see what we're doing. And it's so funny. I was, <laughs> I started cracking up. I turned around. And there's a guy standing there going, <laughs> yeah, like that. And it's like it's, it's, well, and it's I was, like I, a peep show. And, and the worst like part was that you, you forget store. it. You're, I'm sitting there watching, it and I started running my mic and like pulling up my shirt. And yeah. Like, and then I, and then I like, turned around. I was like, oh, we're oh, in a fishbowl. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's that's hey, they come to Vegas for a show. Yeah. They yeah. get one. Yeah, <laughs> not exactly. A, not a show. That I'm they like, want. I'm like trying to make sure I don't like pick my nose or sneeze and make a mess or something like that because they're all watching. They're sitting back there, just like, I want that. You know, it's hilarious. So they were asking me about the lights. They're like, well, why don't you just use LEDs out here? I was like, LEDs, they don't get that bright yet. Yeah, you know? you're not going to get that throw on an LED. You're going to have to have a yeah. big, huge like, bank of LEDs. Or they're just super expensive. I mean, right. I remember I have, we, haven't, we haven't been able to go see the actual show floor yet because they're still building it. And by the way, uh, we did put out a little video for you guys uh, sh giving a pre-booth tour 
the other day when nothing had been built. So we'll, we'll do another little walkthrough, show, so we'll show you everything now that it's built. It's really sweet. The guys uh, from Freeman and uh, the NAB show NAB. folks, they did an amazing job with this thing, didn't they? Yeah, I'm yeah, really, it looks really great. liking it. No, absolutely. Yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely a, a bigger, more fleshed out thing than we've done yeah, at, at no CS joke. for the last couple. And we've, we've done our biggest thing at CS. Yeah. And uh, this, is really, this is really impressive. Yeah, I'm it's nice. It. So we'll go, out, we'll, go in the, uh, we'll go in the hall uh, where they're still building all the booths and things, and we'll capture, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> we'll capture some video so you can see what it's like before, before they get it all set up. Because I think it's actually more interesting to see what they're doing now mm -hmm. than it is afterwards. It's just filled with people and you can't really see much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a process. I mean, it's, it is amazing. I mean, you, you, it's, it's hard to imagine how much goes into building these, but they start building these booths um, a week, sometimes two weeks mm -hmm. in advance, yeah. you know, or, or even more than that. I mean, I know that for, for CES, I think we were running cables um, uh, two or three weeks before the event. Mm -hmm. So that's when the flooring was going in and, and everything else. And then we ran two rounds so that the first first set of cables, when they got run over by a forklift, uh -huh. still had a signal. Oh, you had redundancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one of the tricks with, with this stuff is to, is to run two, line, two, two routes. I'm glad we have you here because you're the pro. So uh, <laughs> yeah, anytime... We're usually just rubbing two sticks together. Yeah. You always come in with a blowtorch. <laughs> yeah, <right>? exactly. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know, flamethrower. It's yeah. Good, it's a good thing. Yeah, but the, uh, um, it, is, it is fascinating to watch, watch the whole thing come up, you know, and, uh, and it's a mixture of, you know, it, 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 incredible amount of machinery and, and so on and so forth and it's hard to believe that a lot of times it'll be the only time these booths get built. Yeah. Some of them are moving booths. Some of them are things that they're going to re replicate and move along and right. so on and so forth but uh, some of these booths, you know, next year it'll be something completely different. And yeah. they th and they spend like it is oh, not millions. unheard of to drop a million bucks on a booth. Oh yeah. Oh, like at least. Uh, like at least. I'm ones. just saying yeah, like yeah, about a big pavilion, yeah. You could drop a million bucks on a booth. Mhm. Mm and that's the only time it will ever be seen in that format. Yeah. That's yes. that's the one and only time bang. Yep. So they need a lot of ROI. So I'm sure that they're glad that we're having a bunch of them on the show yes. so they can <laughs> try and... Yes, they're banking on this. Yeah, stretch, stretch that, that money, <laughs> sell a few of those products and things yeah, yeah. like that. So you guys got to do a few interviews today. I did not, but uh, how was that? Was it, was it good? It was good. It was, it was good. good. Very yeah. good start, very interesting mm -hmm. topics. Isn't so. it nice to not have to go wear yourself out on the yes. floor? They bring them to you, they come to so you. Comfy yeah. that way. It is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My feet feel better already. Yeah. yeah. Yes, now, of course, yeah. we don't lose the weight that you know we usually do. I know. I know exactly. So running I'm, around. I'm gonna still run around a little bit. You are. Yeah. I'm, I'm chained around. back there. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah no, I'm doing, taking advantage. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be wandering around, grabbing stuff. I, I do these little reviews on my phone. Mm. So I like wander around and like point at stuff and say, I like this and I don't like that and this is great and so. That's I, the greatest. You know, uh, you were saying earlier that we haven't really, you haven't been to this particular show. Yeah. In the past, um, when I came, I came one year with Ken and one year with uh, Callie, mm -hmm. and all we did was exactly that. We walked around with a Samsung Galaxy camera, mm -hmm. and if we found a cool booth, we just shot like two minutes of video, yep. and like in the camera, we just said upload to YouTube, and mm -hmm. then we shared it, and everybody liked it, because it's raw, and it's... You know, and I found it, you know, the first couple of years that I was really covering NAB, you know, because for a long time I was working booths, and mm -hmm. then I was speaking at NAB, and I was just kind of wandering around, and then so when I was actually covering it, I, I, we had camera crews, and we had got, you know, so people would follow me around with an EX1 or whatever, and, 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 I, and it was this process and everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and delay? Some, yeah. And delay because oh, you've yeah, got to yeah. film it, then edit, right. and everything? Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and, and I have to admit that once I started doing it with my phone, I was kind of like, and then I did, last year I did it with glass. Which yeah, that's right, you did. I may do again. Yeah, you've it's, been... Glass you've been, is a really great... How did that work out for you? It worked really well. To, review, to do the John reviews in glass. John loves Google Glass. No, but I, it worked, <laughs> what, what really worked about glass... I mean, there's a lot of things about glass that don't work. Yeah. Like um, booting up, I mean... Booting up. How about battery the life? I don't know how you yeah. could do coverage of this event because the battery, like video battery, is like little, dead. Little dies. Portable batteries. Yeah, you had to. So I, I had a little. You had cabinet. to have a cable oh, yeah, coming yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it got worked, it. Okay. It totally worked. And yeah. so, so uh, and I would last all day, and I could sit there. And, and what was great about it was, is now I suddenly had two hands. You know, so I could sit there and just look, look. And I, well, sure. it was kind of weird. I'd look up like this, and I'd be talking, you know, and pointing at things, kind yeah. of looking upward at my screen to yeah. make sure I was make getting sure you it. Got the, it. It was nice because when you're really trying to show something, and, and the, the, the thing that I will say, and the thing I'm willing to look for here is another equally good head-mounted camera that doesn't 
completely look dorky. You know, like when you put, you well, put a GoPro on, you put now. the GoPro on. Yeah, yeah. The cop, so cops the cops are using one. Th I've, I like I've, those. I, I met a police officer last weekend, uh, Easter weekend, and um, he had a nice little. It's it like looked, a bullet, like a bullet head. It looked, head like, it looked like a bullet. Yeah, it looked like he had a. The problem is, I don't. What I really like about the GoPro is that I can see what I'm doing. I mean, right. not the GoPro, the, the, the glass. Right, you can. Was that I had this little heads up display sure. that you know. So what I really want is like a little camera that has like a little screen that like pops over one one yeah. eye or something. Well, and so then that'll make you, me sick and make me blind. Then you have your phone and like hit a button and then a lower third come up. Well, you know, yeah, like, there we go. No, I, it literally. You mean you're not you're not working on one of those? No comment. You know. So yeah. You're always developing something. And we got some fun stuff. So, so but yeah, so the, um, but I, but, but figuring out a way to kind of capture that and talk about it is. That point of view thing is really, um, that, and you know, you went on a tirade about Google Glass. <laughs> I which, did. Which still is one of our highest viewed videos. But, um, you know, the way Trey Ratcliffe is using Google Glass, that is what I see Glass being used for. He's built this, um, uh, this little network. The it, Arcanum. It, yeah, the mm -hmm. Arcanum where, uh, these photographers, world-class photographers, are making these videos, turning on the glass and going, okay, I'm getting ready to do this shoot. And I've got this camera over here and this, and I'm doing this lighting. Now let me show you how I'm doing this. And they're just walking around setting up their gear and, that's and what it's getting really good into for. the viewfinder and, and testing it. And, and I mean, of course, you know, conceptually, every I mean, obviously I'm right in there with everybody. That's what I want. Right. I want that. I spent $2,000 on glass. I had the prescription, prescription lenses, the yeah. whole nine yards. It's just that my experience was so wretched with it that it made me really, really gun shy about any of these technologies. Sure. But I want it, you know. I think right. it'd be awesome, um, and I can't wait to have it. But we'll see. I just kept on breaking mine. There was oh, no. Yeah? They never made a. I guess at the end they made a hard case that was really good. Oh yeah. But the early ones came in like a little bag. The little soft pouch. So I broke. Right. I broke over the ear, and then I sent it back, and they sent me another one. And then I kept it in a, like a Bose headphone <laughs> case, and it broke again. You know? But and now that they've discontinued glass, I mean, no, I can't get you can't even get parts or anything, right? No. Gosh. Well, that's okay. We're going to find something else cool. We're going to find lots of cool things here. Actually, we're going to have tons of them come right here mm -hmm. to the stage. Uh, and, and Alex, you were wonderful to bring, to bring these really awesome... Uh, PTZ cameras with yes. you. These, what are we using? We're using these some are Sony, Sony's. Yeah, Sony uh, BRC 900s. So they're basically an EX1 or EX3 um, in a remote control head. Mm -hmm. So, so they're, and they they're, are, they're they cute are little great. cameras. Yeah, they're yeah. cool. And we've got them mounted upside down here. That's one of the greatest things about um, about the these types of uh, of rigs is that you can mount it. Upside down, flip yep. the image. And they're great know. for like when you're. For, we do. We use them for cooking shows sure. and, and also for right uh, tech, tech right shows over. where you yep. can just have them hanging yep. right over something. I have a couple. I have another set, a Panasonic set actually, in my office, and and I have this. For I have your this, Skype calls. Yes. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> actually, actually, I have. I have the best. He's that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. I have a Skype TX box sitting That's in there. Yeah, exactly. Was, and then you know, well, someone was asking. It was like because I, I teach classes on it. And it's um, it's oh, got a sure. digital whiteboard and yeah. Telestrator and a bunch excuse. of other stuff. And someone was like, "How? Why, if I wanted one of these, how much would it cost?" I was like, "Well, it's a little, you know, it's like, <laughs> you, you don't I, want it I if you have to pay for it." Yeah. For this. What? <laughs> I have clients that built well, this it, out. Well, yeah. we, we took stuff that was we don't use as much, and we right. kind of cobbled yeah. things together. So it's it's uh, it's not the newest stuff we have, but it's still pretty new. But it's still so. better than any. It's yeah, still it's drool worthy. Yeah. So these we're able like we've got the little product camera uh, right here. So if you look at, at my little phone here. You you can see that we can get right up, right up on it, zoom way in, and there do all that go. good stuff. So, so, so you can really get. Close. Yeah, and these are like yeah. 20x. I think yeah. they're I 20x think they're all zoom, 20 yeah, optical. Zoom. Yeah. yeah, optical. I mean, clearly we could go in further, but you don't need to. So we're going to be able to have all the guests come. They bring their things here. We show it off. But then also, you know, randomly, we're going to go do some coverage in the floor. Mm -hmm. if, if there's something mm -hmm. that we can't bring here, then I'm sure all of us walking around mm -hmm. geeking out at the toys, we're just going to shoot stuff and upload it. So watch all the channels for that. You Please. know. Uh, and watch all our Twitters and whatnot. So, uh, you know, actually, Holly came with me to the show. Nice. So uh, she's sitting over there. You're finally on a leash. Yeah, my better half. Yeah, yeah. she's sitting over there. I, I think they're going to put her you. on. They're going to put her on. Thank so, uh, you. <laughs> yeah, say hi to everybody, Holly. Uh, yeah, you're on TV. There she uh, is. Anyway, so I got to go entertain her this evening. All right. But I think Showstoppers is this evening too, right? Is this is it Sunday? This? Today's oh, Sunday. The pressure. Yes, we have Showstoppers. Tonight. I think I'm going to send you guys to Showstoppers Perfect. because I have better things to do with my time. Yes. And uh, so I'm going to go see if I can entertain Holly. You guys can go yeah, to Showstoppers. She's so high maintenance. I know. She's so, <laughs> yeah. So uh, she puts up with me. So we'll entertain her a bit. You guys, 
You're awesome for tuning in. I hope yes. you enjoy the pre-coverage Sunday here. It was good, good for us to work out a few little bugs, and we discovered a few, so yes. we'll talk about those, uh, and we're going to get them worked out with the rest of the team. Stay tuned because we're going to be broadcasting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 11 to 6. What time zone are we in? We're in Pacific, Pacific time. Yeah. Pacific time. And then on Thursday, we're going 11 to 2. Right. So we got a lot of interviews. I think we're going to do something like 80 interviews over the next few nice. days. So Fantastic. lots of coverage for you guys. As always, uh, you can you can uh, tweet questions at us at NAB Show. Yep. Yeah. Or if you're on other social platforms, uh, hashtag NAB Show. Yeah. Hashtag it. And also in the chat room, we'll be watching that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. Other than that. It's uh, they're going to be uh, they're going to be getting the liquor and and food ready over at Showstoppers pretty soon. So uh -huh. I'm guessing you guys want to yeah. Let's go get some booze that. and some shrimp. <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks for watching. We will see you later on. I'm John P. Dave Curley. Alex Lindsay. Bye, guys.